Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mark Amos. Hey, in this video, we're gonna compare LPT Realty and EXP Realty as it pertains to RevShare. You know, RevShare is not something that AJ and I talk about a lot on this channel when it comes to LPT Realty, mainly because we think there's so many other good reasons to join LPT Realty that we kind of view the RevShare as icing on the cake for most agents. And so we don't spend a lot of time talking about it. But recently, a lot of the agents that have been partnering with us and exploring partnering with us are asking us the question about adding additional sources of revenue to their business and they're looking at rev share as one of those potential sources of revenue something they don't have to have a direct trade of time for money for right something residual so they're looking at the rev share potential out there within the cloud-based brokerages and they're looking at exp and they're looking at lpt as two of the really big players that are out there in the cloud-based brokerage space where you can go to earn rev share so they ask us where is the best opportunity in the industry right now to actually earn rev share to build an organization and so while obviously our biased answer is well LPT because we're the fastest growing real estate brokerage ever in history. I had never actually taken the time to break down the real numbers and do an apples to apples comparison of what the opportunity is. So in this video, we're going to go through that. I've got a presentation here that shows you the math. It's really, really basic math. You can go find the numbers yourself and run the numbers to make sure that uh, I'm not pulling your leg. So we're going to jump over here and we're start digging into the actual differences between LPT Realty and EXP Realty when it comes to how much opportunity there is to build a rev share organization. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, here we are. So before we dig in, I want to make one clarification, and that is what question are we trying to answer and how are we going to answer that question? So the question that we're really trying to answer is which company, LPT versus EXP, gives agents today in 2024 the most opportunity to go out and build a rev share organization so they can start earning that additional layer of residual income in their business. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to look at how many agents have been doing it recently. So the methodology that I'm going to use for this is we're going to look at the year 2023 and we're going to look at how many agents the company started with how many they ended with, how many people were out there recruiting, and then we're gonna take an average to see of the number of recruiting agents, on average, how many were most able to bring into their organization. So it's pretty simple. So we only need a couple pieces of information here. So let's dig in. So again, how many agent partners does the average attracting agent attract? So this is the real simple math here, guys. We're gonna look at year over year net agent growth, and that's gonna be our net partners gain. So what we're trying to look at here is how many agents did we start the year with? How many agents did we end the year with? And the, the difference between those is the net gain. Now, I'm not talking about the total number of agents that you brought into your brokerage. So for example, if you added 40,000 agents, but you lost 35,000 agents, you only gained 5,000 agents. So we're looking at the net here, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out within each company, how many recruiting agents do we actually have? Now, I'm gonna take EXP's word for it that only about 10% of their company is actively involved in trying to do agent attraction. With my experience here at LPT, I can say that's probably realistic. Um, so I'm gonna use 10% for both of those because I think it's a pretty fair number and that way we're on the same playing field. And then all we're gonna do guys is we're gonna take the number of new agents that we added, divide that by the number of agents that we're recruiting, and that's gonna give us the number of agents added per recruiting agent. So let's move forward with this. So we'll start with EXP. And again, this is 2023. Just so you know, all the numbers that I'm using, again, the 10% is kind of what EXP says um, that they have uh, that number of agents actually recruiting. But in terms of the agent count, this is straight off of EXP's website. So you can go find this. Um, this was from their uh, Q3 2023 numbers, year over year growth. Uh, they have not come out with their Q4, but this is going to be pretty close. So uh, they ended uh, Q3 with 89,156 agents. They had 5% growth. So that means they started with 84,939. So grand total, they added 4,247 agents, give or take. Again, they gave a percentage here. This could be off by you know a dozen or 100 agents one way or another, but it's going to be pretty close, right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how many agents starting off that year were actively involved in recruiting. So again, we're going to take their word at 10%. So 10% of 84,939 is 8,493 recruiting agents. So we've got 4,247 partners that were gained by 8,493. So it's really simple math. We just divide one by the other and we come to a grand total of 0 0.5. 
So these are the numbers, guys. This is the realistic number behind um, the 2023 results for EXP. Um, I'm gonna point some things out uh, a little bit later that this is their global number. So they added those 4,300 agents across the entire globe. We're gonna go into a little bit more uh, the differences between um, the, the current geographic footprint of the two companies, but I want you to understand this is not just in the United States. This is uh, all of um, EXP in all 50 states and 24 countries. So they were able to attract around 43 net, uh, 4,300 net, net, net agent partners, and there were about 8,500 agents um, that were actively doing that. So on average, each agent that was actively recruiting was able to add one half of one. And so I, I want to kind of point out here that what this does show is that the 10% number is probably not realistic. There may be 10% of the agents who are actively trying to go out there and attract, uh, but on average, 50% of that 10% um, would have attracted zero agents, and then about 5% of the uh, company would have each attracted one additional agent over the course of the entire year. So... Let's do the exact same math and we're gonna use LPT's numbers. The numbers for 2023 for LPT, we started uh, the year at about 2,500 agents and we ended the year at 6,500 agents. So we gained 4,000 agent partners over that time. Now I'll go into later, this was in anywhere between two and eight states. So for the bulk of 2023, we were only open in two, three, four states for about half of it. And then uh, as many as eight by the end of the year. And so I'll go into that a little bit later, again, just to make a little bit more realistic comparison uh, of what this, this actually looks like. So the number of recruiting agents, we're gonna take our 2,500, again, 10% of that, 250 agents. So we had 250 agents that collectively were able to attract 4,000. And so when we run those numbers, we come up with this. So on average, an agent that was actively trying to recruit, right, one of those 10% at the company who was actively out there uh, recruiting agents, um, on average, they were able to attract 16 agent partners uh, into their organization. And so again, um, does that mean that every agent attracted 16? No, some attracted a lot more, some attracted fewer, again, the same way that it would have been impossible for 10% of EXP to actually be involved in agent attraction, because they only grew by 5%. So in theory, only 5% of the company could have added one agent. Uh, again, these are averages, guys, but I hope that makes sense. All right. So visually, that's what this would look like. So one agent attracting 16, again, would have been the average for LPT in 2023. So when you compare these two visually beside each other, this is what you come up with. And again, this is not to disparage anyone. It is just to show the actual numbers of what occurred over the course of the last year when it comes to agent attraction in both of these companies. So again, over here, we've got EXP, who each of their uh, recruiting agents were able to gain 0.5. And we have LPT, where each of the recruiting agents uh, on average would have gained around 16. So... That means that the average recruiting agent at LPT Realty attracted 32 times more partners compared to those recruiting agents at EXP Realty. So in terms of the actual difference, LPT agents were 32 times more likely to attract an agent into their organization than an EXP agent was. Now, I do wanna talk about the current geographic footprint of both of these companies because they are very different. So as I spoke about during most of the time in 2023, LPT Realty was only open in between two and eight states, uh, which included Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Texas, Colorado, and Nevada. So those were the states that we were open in. Um, contrary to that, again, that's where our 4,000 agents came from. The 4,300 agents from EXP, um, that was a global number. So that came from all 50 states as well as 24 countries. Uh, you can read out the countries uh, here on the slide. I'm not going to read those for you. But again, that's going to give you um, a little bit different perspective about how many uh, let's say United States based partners, uh, people here were able to reach because you have to imagine that as they're growing into these other countries, a lot of the growth they're seeing is probably coming from outside the United States as they're expanding their global footprint. Um, for all we know, there was a net loss of agents at EXP. I'm not saying that there was in, in terms of uh, in the United States. Um, but we do know in a lot of individual markets, that was the case. And we're going to get into a case study here in a second, that's going to talk a little bit more about that. So again, this is the global reach. And so when you ask yourself, what's the growth potential, as far as EXP is concerned, they're already in all 50 states. There is nowhere else for them to go. They're in all 50 states. They're in Canada and Mexico. Again, you can see all of the different, um, all the different countries that they're in here. 
We're currently in 20 states here at LPT, and uh, most of those states were added in the last month of the year. So really uh, mid-November to mid-December is where the bulk of those extra states were added. And as you can see right here, we've got a map showing all of the states that we're currently open in here in LPT. Now, that means with us being in currently 20 states, we have 30 additional states to grow into, as well as other countries. So as you're looking at the number of agents that we were to add in just two to eight states, you kind of have to imagine that as we go into 50 states and other countries, there's certainly a lot more growth potential for us. We're certainly not saturated or maxed out. Now, I want to take a real life case study here because again, we there are some areas where we see net losses on a lot of these uh, companies where they're actually losing a lot more agents than we're gaining. And, and this particular one came from a really good agent partner of ours, uh, JT Ford down in San Antonio, Texas. If you're in the San Antonio, San, San Antonio area, you've got to look up JT and connect with him. Great guy. And he'll definitely take care of you, uh, getting you hooked up with LPT Realty. And these were some numbers that they shared from their local MLS board over the course of 2023. So again, we're just looking at EXP and LPT in this particular case. So um, highlighted here in orange, and I'll go ahead and jump over. So uh, let's take a look at EXP first. So EXP gained 562 agents in the San Antonio market over the course of 2023, but they simultaneously lost 739. So overall, EXP had a net loss of 177 agents in the San Antonio market. So there's 177 fewer agents in that city when the year ended than when it started. Now, that means, and we're just going to kind of divide all of this um, into some smaller numbers to make it easier to understand. But if you added 5.6 partners to your downline over the course of 2023 at EXP, you would have simultaneously lost 7.4 agents over the same time period. So your, down, your downline that year would have actually shrunk by 25%. So again, you would have added agents, five, five and a half agents, but you would have lost seven and a half agents. And so you would have been in a net loss of your downline um, while putting in all of the work to attract the five and a half agents. Again, this is not, um, this, this means you had to actually attract agents. You're just losing more than what you're adding. And I want to take comparison LPT. So, uh, and again, all these numbers, by the way, I want to, um, I want to thank JT and, and his whole crew down there just absolutely crushing it and making these numbers realistic because uh, they're really, really showing agents the opportunity that we have here at LPT. And as we can see, it's really working. And so over the same time period, when EXP lost 177 agents net, uh, LPT gained 338 agents and lost 38. So that was a net gain of 300 agents uh, here in San Antonio. Now, that means that LPT's presence increased in agent count in that market by 3,433%. So, <laughs> you gotta ask yourself, why are all of these changes happening, right? Why are so many agents leaving one model and going to another? And so I'm just going to do a quick side by side comparison here to show you what agents are looking at out in the field as they're determining what brokerage is going to be best for them. So uh, here on the left, you can see we've got eXp Realty's comp plan. Again, they have one comp plan. It's the same for everybody. Uh, it's an 80-20 split, $16,000 cap. They have $149 startup fee, an $85 monthly fee, $25 per transaction broker review fee, $40 per transaction risk management fee. And then a transaction fee of $250 after the pay this cap, which uh, maxes out at $5,000. So you're, you're all in total cap. If you want to be an icon agent, it's $21,000. You got your $16,000 plus your $5,000 in transaction fees. They do not have any annual fee. Uh, instead, they have the $85 monthly fee, which comes out to $1,020 a year. Now, when you compare that with LPT, we actually have two different comp plans. So the one I'm going to show you here is the one that's closest to what EXP has. That's our 80-20 split with a $15,000 cap. So the cap is $1,000 less. There's zero startup fee, no cost to join, zero monthly fee. So if you don't close a deal with LPT, you're not going to pay LPT any money. There's no broker review fee. There is no risk management fee. Instead, that all gets lumped into a one-time $500 per year annual fee that comes out of your very first deal. So again, you're not going to pay anything to LPT. They're not going to be dinging your credit card every month if you're not selling real estate. And that's a big deal for a lot of agents. And that's one of the reasons that we're seeing agents leaving brokerages like EXP that are dinging their credit card every single month, regardless of whether or not they're selling real estate, and they're going, why? And so that's one of the things we see also. And then uh, the only other fee that LPT has is $195 per transaction fee on every single transaction that you do. So the second plan that LPT has is called our business builder plan. 
And this is $500 per transaction with a $5,000 cap. So you do 10 transactions, you have capped. Again, zero startup fee, zero monthly fee, zero broker review fee, zero risk management fee, $195 transaction fee on each deal, and the $500 per year annual fee. So those are a difference in the comp plan. And, and that's one of the reasons. But what we also see is the additional marketing that LPT um, provides, whether it's the free listing power tools, whether it's the free billboards to our agents, whether it's the uh, option for the luxury collection where you can do um, cross market billboards, really, really high end, high quality print marketing for multi million dollar homes that are beating out Sotheby's and Christie's list uh, agents. And so there's a lot of support, there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of marketing, there's a lot of ways that LPT LPT is helping its agents grow their business faster, and they're doing it at a much lower cost. And so that's why I think we're seeing so many of the agents take the migration uh, away from eXp and come over to LPT. So I have to ask you a question. If you're an agent right now in 2024, and you're thinking about getting into agent attraction, you want to grow that organization of agents that partner with you, that name you as their sponsor, and that you get to share in the upside of the revenue they generate by taking a portion that would go to the company and keeping that for yourself for the work that you've done. So if you're going to do that, do you want to do that at the company that had an average gain of 0.5 agents per recruiting agent, or the one that had 16 new agent partners per attracting agent? And I think the answer there is pretty, pretty simple. But I want to make it very clear that I don't mean this um, as a negative thing towards EXP. This is just the reality of how these types of organizations grow. And so in five to seven, however many years, again, EXP, I think is about 14 years old now, and we're seeing they're hitting that saturation number. They're about 90,000 agents. My gut tells me that outside of international growth, they probably may see some, some negative agent growth over the next couple of years as more agents are looking for different options. And so again, if you have an organization that has negative agent growth, that's losing more agents than they're gaining, the opportunity for you to join that brokerage and build a rev share organization statistically is zero. I'm not saying that you can't add some agents, but if you're losing more than you're gaining, the likelihood of really being able to build that, unfortunately, is just zero. And so in a certain number of years, eventually, when, e when LPT is 100,000 agents, 150,000 agents, 200,000 agents, whatever that number ends up being, the opportunity is going to be very similar at LPT then as it is to EXP now. When we hit 150, 200,000 agents, agent number 150,000 simply does not have the same opportunity to build a rev share organization as agent 5,000, agent 15,000. And so I want you to keep that in mind. This is not to say that one model is better than another, um, although there are some clear differences that agents are choosing one over the other. It's just to show that this is the nature of what happens in a rev share organization over time. And that's one of the big reasons that agent and I just don't push rev share a lot as a reason to join LPT, because what we know is that in the future, that will become less and less of a reason for agents to join as the opportunity simply diminishes. That's how it works, guys. The earlier you get in, the more chance that you have to be very successful in building a rev share organization. And when that brokerage hits a saturation level, that opportunity kind of goes away. So if you decide that this is something you want to do, you want to either come over here and do nothing but sell real estate and kind of keep this on the back burner. Maybe eventually you get into rev share, or maybe you're somebody who says, man, that's some pretty serious opportunity. I want to dig into this and hit it really hard. Guys, fortunately, there's so much opportunity because, again, we're only in 20 states. We just opened in our 20th state. And so there's so much runway. There's so much opportunity um, for someone who really wants to add RevShare as a revenue stream to their business here at LPT Realty. If you'd like to discuss it in a little bit more detail with AJ and myself, go ahead and um, schedule a one-on-one -on -one private Zoom call with us. We would love to connect with you. We'd love to answer any questions that you have, give you our experiences, the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, the ugly, but we'd love to chat with you. We'd love to know a little bit more about you and see if we can help, see if we might be the right partners for you um, to partner with here at LPT. And uh, until then, be well.